Hello everybody, this is going to be a little bit of a different video. Um, going to talk about, uh, well, it's been a very rough August. Um, if you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, uh, you'll notice in the background the cats always sneak in. I had three cats. Uh, Mama Cat <clears throat> uh, recently passed away at the beginning of August. She was four days shy of 18. Great cat. Um, and then I have Miss Molly. She, of course, is the fluffy one that loves to crash the videos as well, too. Uh, and then uh, I also have Theodore. Um, I'll give you some backstory on these guys. So uh, when it was just uh, Mama Cat many years ago, uh, I felt like, hey, she needed a friend. So I uh, uh, searched around for that perfect cat. I brought Molly home, and Molly has been a fireball, as you've witnessed in the background of many of these videos, uh, running around, chasing stuff, and... But she's also the photogenic <laughs> wonder cat that she is. Uh, she's a star of my Instagram, Facebook, and, and such. Uh, not long after um, I got uh, uh, Miss Molly, it was pretty apparent that uh, the elderly cat was like, you know what, I can live with this, but it's not my favorite thing. So the same person I was able to adopt uh, Miss Molly from um, contacted me and said, hey, I have a guy that, you know, he's been on the streets for a while. They don't know how he survived, but here he is. He's a very chill cat. Uh, he's also a tuxedo, which is uh, my weakness. I love tuxedo cats, and I brought him home. And that was one of those few occasions where I literally brought him home, opened the cat cage, and let him out, and I went to the gym. <laughs> and when I came back, they had settled everything because, honestly, they were still pretty small kittens, so they were pretty easy to, you know, get anything sorted out. So for a good many years in my life here, there's been the three cats, and... Uh, you know, we knew we were kind of, you know, getting towards the top end of Mama Cat's lifespan. Uh, last year, started doing Silencia, which is a uh, injection she got every month, and uh, that helped tremendously with her arthritis. I feel like that gave her an extra year of life, and she <laughs> just, uh, you know, you don't have a favorite cat, you don't have a favorite kid, but I can tell you that when I came home from work, Mama Cat was was all about me. Uh, Molly would come over and, you know, steal my attention, whatever, but basically she and Theodore were just like that. So in the beginning of August, I did notice Mama Cat was starting to decline a little bit. Um, I noticed that she was having some troubles, uh, you know, a little, little wobblier than usual, I mean, um, but she was still, you know, walking all over the place. Um, for the last year, she lost her hearing. She'd been deaf and, uh, I didn't notice until I dropped something on the ground and she did not even flinch. <laughs> but um, so I brought her to the vet and uh, the thought was, well, you know, most cats, you know, kidneys get them as they get older. And uh, uh, they said, you know what, let's do antibiotics. You know, uh, you know, her values and her blood work, you know, aren't terrible, but they're not great either. So let's see what we can do. And of course, to keep the price down that uh, we did, um, we did the hospitalization, but every evening I'd pick her up and bring her home. So uh, for the first day, she had antibiotics and brought her home, and she was just amazing. She was that great cat that she always has been, full of energy and just a total love bug. And again, I'm the one my friends complain about because I'm always taking the pictures, but I got to tell you, as you mourn your pets, you're so glad you have them. So she had that great night. She was the wonder cat. She was great. I mean, she just wanted to be with me. Um, all but her head rubs, everything else. Um, and then the next day, I brought her back to the vet. Um, they did the treatment and, um, well, continued the treatment, and she just really wasn't improving. So uh, when I brought her home that evening, um, she really wasn't interested in food. She was interested in snacks. Um, so whoever created those little tube uh, snacks there, she, that was her thing. She loved those. And then the next day, uh, brought her in, <clears throat> more treatment, and uh, we had to make a decision. So that was hard. So an extremely difficult choice to make. She was on my chest, purring, happy, and uh, we did the euthanasia. And, uh, and that was rough, you know. You know, so close to 18 years old, a wonderful cat. 
So, uh, so that was the, the first one that was on uh, August the 8th. So we were down one cat. It was just now uh, Miss Molly and Theodore. And, you know, we're, of course, mourning a mama cat. And I guess what's fascinated me about cats is, is how they mourn. Um, I've always had a remote security camera aimed at mama cat's two beds. Um, she was very spoiled. Uh, she had an infrared cat bed and because she had arthritis. And she loved that thing. And I always ran it on the very lowest temperature because uh, that's what but they suggested. And she also had a regular bed uh, right beside. So basically as she would heat up, she would flop over to the other one and then flop over to the other one. And I get these little notifications all day long saying you know, that she's moving around. Um, of course she was deaf, so the idea of remoting in and saying hello was just pointless. Um, but what I found most interesting is, um, you know, I still get all kinds of notifications. Um, and what was interesting was both Theodore and Molly uh, would go to the bed and investigate sniff and search but they would not go into that bed to this day that I, I haven't had the heart to put that bed away and uh, yeah they it's, it's interesting how they how they mourn um, brought her ashes home and what was interesting because I'm fascinated by the paranormal uh, a couple days later I had this uh, picked up an anomaly on the camera and it looked like if you I'll, I'll show the video it looks like a piece of paper floating by the camera but as you look closer it looks more like a little ribbon of light um, so you're always looking for a sign you know from your past pets or whatever and uh, I you know I tried to you know debunk it as oh it must be cat hair or oh, something flew by there but the angle at which the thing flies by there's a ceiling fan directly above so it would, it would blow everything directly down but what's interesting is is it goes by and it goes directly uh, to the little box where her ashes are so that's, that's interesting. So <clears throat> our hearts are sad. And uh, two weeks later, um, I come home on a Saturday after running some errands and uh, Theodore doesn't seem like himself. Um, he lets out kind of a Jurassic Park, like, you know, scream kind of thing. And he's under the bed and he's not usually my cat that goes running under the bed or making noises like that. If anything, he's a big love bug, or, you know, rub my head, pick me up. He's 22 pounds, so be prepared. But uh, a year ago, uh, he did something similar. He uh, developed a urinary blockage. Uh, those of you that are familiar with male cats have probably heard about this or <laughs> encountered it. And in his case, uh, he had bladder stones. So not only did he have the urinary blockage, but he had a bladder full of stones. So uh, last year, uh, he went under surgery. They removed all those stones, and uh, he'd been on a diet uh, food um, specific you know, to treat those, the uh, calcium uh, oxalate. Um, bladder stones that he was prone to. So two weeks ago this happened on a Saturday. I brought him to the emergency vet and the emergency vet is of course extremely expensive and you are given a few grim options. Uh, they can treat, uh, they can manage, or they can euthanize. So I opted uh, you know, not to let them do any surgeries. Please stabilize him, you know, make sure he's not in pain. You know, uh, the, the issue is when they develop this is that the potassium I guess can spike or drop. I'm not sure which direction. But uh, it's essentially, uh, it, it causes a great deal of uh, heart issues for them. So got him in there, they got him stabilized. And on Monday morning, I uh, brought him over to my regular vet and uh, they identified that he indeed had another bladder stone. And uh, upon x-ray, they found that, yeah, he was full of bladder stones again. And I can't remember what they call it, a systome or something. But anyway, they went in there and they removed the bladder stones. And in some cases with the male cats, what they'll do is a PU procedure, which is as best I can tell you is they, they turn your, your it's kind of like a sexual reassignment surgery that you, you know, read about that, you know, trans individuals do. Um, so don't want to go down that road. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they decided that, you know, we're not going to do that because uh, chances are he's going to outgrow this. So, okay, we saved ourselves an expensive surgery. He had that surgery on a Monday. They uh, released him to come home on Monday. And, uh, you know, he was pretty drugged and... Uh, on Tuesday night, he was doing okay, and by Wednesday on into Thursday, I just was like, you know, he's laying in his litter box, he's sipping water, I don't feel like he's improving very much. Um, on a Thursday evening, it was about midnight, I noticed when I had him in the cat bed next to me in bed, um, I noticed he was doing like a twitching thing, and um, 
I, again, I'm not a vet. Some of you folks out there are going to be smarter at this than I am. So I brought him to the emergency vet, and uh, uh, they took a look, and they identified that, well, his bladder seems normal, but he does feel like he has some abdo you know, abdominal fluid buildup going on, and definitely bring him to your vet first thing in the morning. So they released us at 2.30 in the morning, and uh, speaking of Miss Molly, she's found a toy. Bringing some levity to a sad video. But anyway, so I got him to the vet first thing in the morning, and uh, they identified uh, that he did have the issues, and uh, they did the blood work, and the blood work was not looking very promising. They gave him some medications that were hopefully going to stabilize him. Um, the vet contacted me and said, you know, this is going to be exploratory surgery. Uh, we're going to try to identify what these fluids are and then see what we can find. And I didn't hear anything for about six hours. I got a phone call around four o'clock, so I'm thinking, if it's been this many hours, this must be a good sign. Um, they found some necrotic tissue on his bladder. It was not from the previous surgery, so they, they don't know where it came from. But uh, they had repaired it, but unfortunately his heart stopped uh, during the procedure, and uh, we lost him. So here is Miss Molly. Uh, I don't know how calm she's going to be here. <laughs> Probably not at all because she spaz. But anyway, yeah, so on, uh, we found out on Friday that uh, Theodore had passed. And uh, uh, this little one was super, super depressed. I've never seen this cat just lay on the couch. Um, you know, she's not my clingy cat, but she was just hanging out with me. So, uh, yeah, it was rough. Oh, see you bye. <clears throat> And, uh, yeah, so that's <laughs> kind of where we've been at. Um, the other thing she would do is, you know, her and Theodore used to always uh, chase, each other, chase each other and be in boxes, and she would just sit inside a cardboard box, and she would just sit there for hours. So I uh, brought her home a kitten, and uh, so she went from, from depressed to pissed off rather quickly, but they're, they're adjusting very well, so, so that's good to hear. So anyway... Having said all of that, um, needless to say, you know, not only a very um, emotionally trying time, you know, because I'm a single guy and the cat's my family. And I'm sure many of you can relate to that. You know, you're, I mean, I'm not saying that those of you that are married and have kids, you know, don't love your animals like their babies as well, too. But um, I, I just, again, I'm just saying from my point of view, uh, you know, they're, they're my kids, <laughs> you know, and they're also this, the stars of my social media and uh, my Facebook uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, I'm the kind of guy at work that uh, you, you are going to see pictures of cats, uh, whether you wish to or not sometimes. But uh, having said all of that stuff, and I'm trying to put this together into a coherent video, so please, please humor me. So the rub I'm having right now is I haven't had the time or resources to do a lot of 3D printing videos just because of the stress. Uh, and everything else, and I'm a little concerned about the finances right now. Um, fortunately, the vet has given me a lot of leeway uh, as far as making payments. Um, I'm still paying the care credit card from last year. Um, so that's why I started the GoFundMe. And I know folks have a lot of different views on, on GoFundMe and what have you, but, uh, but I put one together because I had a number of my friends saying, look, you know, if you, if you don't ask, you won't get anything, so, so why not? So. So that's what I've put together, and uh, I'll put a link down here below. Because um, right now, uh, when I was talking to the uh, veterinarian office, you know, Mama Cat ran up a you know about a fifteen hundred dollar bill. Um, Theodore was about uh, you know twenty five hundred, and that was just at the veterinary hospital. We're not talking the ER vet. ER vet's paid because <laughs> you, you have to. <laughs> you can't take the animal unless you're all paid up. And I was able to crowdsource some money from friends uh, already to help make that happen. So big thank you to my family and friends that have uh, Venmoed me some funds to, to help out with that. Uh, of course, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got the payment plan set up, but uh, I just wanted to see if any of my friends could <laughs> definitely help me out here because to lose two in one month is pretty brutal. And right now the grand total is well in excess of $4,000. The GoFundMe I put together, I'm just, you know, I've, I looked at other GoFundMe and, 
you know, some never meet their goals, you know, some, some do. So I figured, you know, I would ask for, you know, roughly 2,500 and uh, if I get more, great. You know, if I, if I meet goal, that's awesome too. But I've been always very honest with my YouTube family. Um, you guys have been watching me for years, some newer, uh, you know, some older. But uh, I just wanted to do uh, touch base and let you guys know what's going on here at where Nerdy is Cool Global Headquarters. And uh, we're working on mending our hearts. So since you guys are family, I wanted you to meet Scooter. And uh, he's three and a half months old, and he and Molly are working on uh, getting along and playing and, and having fun together. And uh, Scoot is pretty much into everything. Uh, he is a male cat. Uh, I kind of told myself when I was looking, don't get another male cat. You don't want to go through that again. But he kind of won my heart because he does something that uh, Theodore used to do. And Theodore was big about grabbing your fingers and squeezing them. What are you doing, buddy? <laughs> okay, tell you what. Let's... Uh... Uh, okay, put you right there. All right, it's uh, yeah, he's got those claws. It's kind of like having a parrot. He always wants to be on your shoulder. So anyway, I wanted to end the video on a little bit of a positive note. And uh, like I said, I'm usually not one to you know ask for help or whatever, but these are pretty unusual circumstances. And uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty big payment plan I'm on, and uh, anything uh, anything helps. So. Thanks for watching. Link is down below in the description. And, uh, <laughs> geez, you're full of stuff already. Hi. <laughs> and that's it from Miss Molly, me, and Scooter.